back it's speaking birds here with your boy speaks man it's here all, all, all the all the off season all the wait ever since that super bowl ends you know you just got you just kind of wait and it's back we're here it's week one first the green bay packers in brazil we'll get to that later but man it's great so, sorry i kind of teetered off there in the uh in the preseason you know hey the preseason's for everyone everyone's getting their reps in i was i was back east Back east traveling, visiting, uh, visiting. So I actually did record after the Baltimore game, uh, but just never, never got it out. Never, um, never forced it. Never forced it out. But the preseason I thought ended, uh, you know, with that loss to the Vikings. But you know, we were playing the third stringers. You know, not really, not really playing uh, the key guys. I think the Vikings did trot out some. Some first stringer, second stringer. So regardless, we finished two and one. I thought I thought we played good. I think I mentioned on a previous speaking birds that I, I thought I thought this team showed a little more life in the preseason than in in the past. And I don't know. Maybe I'm making this up, but it, it always seemed like in the past that I don't know. We, we just looked dead. Even last last season, it's like we went into the season. I felt I felt like the team was was barely hanging on. It, it looked like lethargic, you know, we ended up having a good start last season, but you could tell just something wasn't right. You know, it, it just seemed like we were scraping by. I mean, remember the wins we were like winning by a field goal playing, playing poorly through the first half. So, so I, I think we're good. I think we got some momentum. We got some mojo going in. I think, uh, yeah, I think we definitely are going to, going to start strong. Uh, but yeah, it was, was back East saw Bruce Springsteen, at Citizens Bank Park, that's where the Philly plays. The Phillies play. That's where the Phillies play. Uh, and it was great. Got to see the link. Got to got to go around Philly. So always a great time. And uh, and now we're back, back in Los Angeles. Back in Los Angeles, the sunny, sunny Los Angeles. Flew out of Baltimore. Baltimore's a uh, Baltimore is my airport. I don't know. I've been to a been to a, been to a good amount of airports in my day. Just BWI is my spot. I got I got my got my my airport bar spots. Shout out Green Turtle. I got my got my uh got my bar table that I always go to in the back corner. It was occupied this time, but that's it was kind of busy. Labor Day weekend. But uh but that's okay. It was a great time either way. Oh, here's here's a move. Some uh some Eats and Speaks content. Here's a move I saw. So so I go to the Green Turtle. And uh, and that's like you know it's it's a brewery and you know they got they got their own beers but then there's a place if if you go you know kind of towards the gate there's a place that, that people aren't there a lot it's a like I think like a seafood joint but you know they got the, their domestic they got the aluminum pints of Miller Lite it's a great spot bartender's super slow that's okay he's a nice guy he's he's always there but he's just he's just slow as molasses he, you know he, you wait there and, and you, you know the airport vibe you're kind of like, you're always kind of like in a hurry even if you're not in a hurry you're kind of like you know I don't really want to wait around you know some, something could pop off you know not, not that they'd ever be like hey you got to board now but, but you just never know maybe you get a text a push notification hey you're boarding now you, you got to go anyway so as I'm sitting there he's he's taking care of this couple at the bar he, here's a move that he did now one of my pet peeves is when a bartender comes up and you know, when you got that last sip of beer in your pint glass, you, you know what I'm talking about. You got, you, you want that last sip and the bartender just comes up and rips it from you. And, hey, you want another one? Takes it. That, that's my biggest pet peeve. I can't stand it. And I, I've said a couple times, Hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not done. Put, put that back. All right. Here's what this guy did. So I guess this, uh, this fella, he ordered a pint of Miller light in one of the aluminum cans. And I guess he asked for a glass, you know, a glass pint glass to uh, to pour it in, which to each their own. I wouldn't do that personally, but 
Regardless, this bartender comes up. He shakes. He shakes the uh, the aluminum can, and, and pours just. It was like a last sip. It, it wasn't much, and he pours it in the glass and takes the can. Now I saw that, and and this guy went from a slow louse bartender to bartender of the year, in my opinion. I mean, it's just, it's just such a clutch move. And not even saying the guy wants that. He didn't look like a guy that's hanging on by the last sip. But I just respect that. He, he poured it in there. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, look, it was a great move. It was a great move. Okay, right, enough of that. Enough of that. I just I, 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 I just say that out loud. You know, it's been, it's been staring in my head for the past week. But let's get into business, guys. Let's get into business. Let's get caught up here. Captains. They've named the captains this year, 2024, Philadelphia Eagles captains, Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Lane Johnson, J. Mylotta, Slay. He's like, he's like Prince and he goes by Slay. I forget. I think, I think Z Berman made that joke. We got Slay. We got uh, Brandon Graham, Jake Elliott. So obviously Jason Kelsey off the team. He was a captain last year. Fletcher Cox off the team was a captain last year. Here's a big one. Here's. There's a guy missing, Devontae Smith. Now, I know these are voted on by the team, and uh, and I'm not saying there's anything. I don't I don't think the team would not vote Devontae for any particular reason, but he's not on there. Now, here's – I don't like that move. I don't like that move one bit. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Maybe Devontae Smith, I can't imagine, doesn't want to be a captain. You know, maybe he, he removed himself. Maybe he felt bad about – I don't know the way the season ended. I I don't think any of those things are true. I'm trying I'm trying to look at this from all angles. Here's my here, here we might do the for the birds a little early here. Here's my for the birds. Maybe is this two time for the birds? Nick Sirianni. We might we might have another for the birds. Maybe Nick. All right, Nick Sirianni, guys. I know these are voted for by the team, like we mentioned, but come on, the coach should have. I think the coach should have one player that he's able to anoint a captain himself. And, uh, and I think it should have been Devonte Smith. I don't think you take that from the guy and look, I mean, maybe he's, you know, keeping to the integrity of the system, um, which sure fine. But I think the coach should be able to, to choose somebody and it should have been Devonte Smith. I don't know. I just think you know, the dude's a stud. I mean, why take that from him? He's a leader. And I think I think he deserved to be there. Um, not to take anything away from uh, Jordan Mailata, who's a first-time captain, and uh, by no means do I think he took Devontae's uh, spot. I don't think it works like that. I think we're we're at nine captains last year, and we we have seven this year, so there was there was room. Um, but yeah, I, I think Devontae Smith definitely earns to be deserves to be a captain. Um, and I would have liked to see him be a captain. Hopefully, hopefully it sparks him up. Hopefully it sparks him up. Career year coming for Smitty. Yeah, that that, that kind of uh, kind of irritated me a little bit. Just a tad, just just a, just a smidge. Week one, Brazil. Guys, this 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 Brazil game, and it's already you know players have already spoken out about you know not wanting to go there. First of all. There's fires ripping through the country, and I, I didn't look at a map. I don't know how close they are to to the city where they're playing, you know, or the stadium. But look, I mean, there's fires. The players have been briefed on what they can and can't do. There's a you know ton of crime. You know, they got to stay in the room. I mean, it's it just it's sick. It's just sick how much of a money grab or a money play this is for the NFL. You know, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Everything that can be said has already been said. I mean, nobody wants to go to Brazil. Nobody wants to see the Brazil games. I think we should keep all games in America. Look, I said it. Hot take. Is that a hot take? Okay, maybe the one-off game in London. We're used to that, but come on. Now we're trying to really globalize. We're losing a home game against. And look, I think this Green Bay game. I think we're gonna see them in the playoffs. I mean, look, maybe NFC Championship game. I think this is a huge NFC matchup that we're losing a home field advantage for. I mean that's that's not cool, and uh, and just yeah, just going to Brazil. It's a long flight, you know. You're gonna you're gonna be jet lagged, you know. You're you're staying in your room. I mean, it just none of this makes sense. It just doesn't make sense. 
the air quality is down. Speaking of home field advantage, here's here's uh, here's a little something I think Nick probably cooked up. He's all about that, uh, you know, slight competitive advantage wherever he gets it. So the Eagles released their uh, their uniform combination. They're going with black helmet, which the black helmet's the first time I think we're rocking it. Looks sick. I'm a fan. White jerseys, black pants, and uh, and the reason why this is uh, could be a competitive advantage. The uh, the team that plays in what is it Corinthians Stadium, so the home team that that's their colorway. It's the black and white. So so you know we're getting that home we're getting that home feel. Green Bay's rocking the green, and so uh, and so the team, the team's rivals, which is you know there was rumblings about no team can wear green. It's going to be too dangerous. The gangs and the hooligans. So Green Bay is going with green. So they're, they're going to be the rivals' colors. So I do respect that. I like that a lot. And. Uh, and I, yeah, I think any any sort of you know competitive advantage you can get, I'm all for. So I, I like the move. Um, I don't know. It's got it's got the makings of uh, of Sirianni on it. So uh, tip my hat to him. Hey, maybe he's not the for the birds winner this week, but man, what what else? What else is wrong with Brazil? Oh, here's the thing. So hey, give me one second. I'm uh, having a bit of a dogfish head over here. Sixty minute IPA. Clocking in at six percent. It's uh, it's good. It's man, Rehoboth Beach, kind of Delaware brewery over here. It's pretty good, I would say. You know, I, tried but true classic. It's like a nine point two, nine point two. Here's another issue with Brazil. So Twitter X, whatever you want to call it, formerly known as Twitter, banned in Brazil. So Elon Musk is fighting with the government. Government saying Elon Musk is this misinformation conglomerate cannot be trusted he's banning it it's all political we know elon musk is a right-wing dude he uh you know he 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 likes trump you know i guess he likes i don't know about brazil politics nor do i really know about american politics but i guess he's you know he's aligned himself with the Pro- republican party the democrats are like we don't like you we're banning twitter so it's kind of a shame because, you know, I, I love game day or like leading up to game day, like the Philly beat writers, you know, I got a, I, you know, on, on the, on the, on my Twitter page, that's all I follow is Philly sports beat writers. So I get all the information from them when I'm watching the game, you know, you're on the broadcast, but I really get the information streamlined to me from the beat writers that I follow. So it'll be interesting to not have that experience. We'll see. I mean, I think guys like, you know, Schefter, Adam Sheff is a Schefter, Adam Schefter, <laughs> Sounds weird to say his name. Adam Scheffler. Scheffer. She- it's Scheffer. Adam Scheffer. I mean, guys like that, it's it's going to be a $9,000 fine if you get caught using it, and that's per day. I think that number, I think it could be more, uh, could be a little less, but that's what I read is $9,000 per day. So guys like that might be able to pay it or their company might be able to pay it. But a lot of these beat writers, you know, smaller companies, you know, maybe they're independent or, you know, they don't have the backing. I don't think they're going to shell out $9,000 per day. Nor do I think they want to go down there and start breaking laws. And, you know, it's kind of a hot issue down there right now. So we'll see what happens. Um, it'll be it'll be different for sure. Even the coverage leading up. I mean, all those guys are going to get down there days in advance. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, kind of a bummer because, you know, you like to get that content. Um, you know, maybe they text, you know, a friend or a colleague up in Philly or, in you know, in the States that, you know, hadn't made the trip. They can tweet for him. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be. I don't know how people are going to get their info, but man, the whole thing is just, it's a fiasco. It's just, it's, it's unnecessary. And I mean, like, do we even need the Brazilian market? Can't they just watch it? Can't they come to America if they want to see a game? I don't know. Anyway, you know, a lot of players, like I mentioned, they spoke out about it. Uh, Slay, I think today it was, you know, just said flat out he doesn't want to go. You know, he told his family, you're not going down. You know, we're just going to be in the room. It's not much to do. Devontae Smith, Smitty, when he asked, he said no comment, just kind of laughed. And then he, I liked this, he said, it's football, just line up. That was kind of his his approach. And A.J. Brown, business trip, I think he called it. You know, he kind of said, you know, why are we going down there? So it, nobody wants to go down. This is, like I said, a money play. It's gross. It's sick. 
I think Goodell, Goodell is, you know what, Goodell is the, uh, for the birds, loser, that guy. He is a loser. Can we talk? Goodell is a loser. Does anybody like him? He's like, he's gross. He's gross. He's grimy. He's like, the worst thing is when like he gets booed at the draft and he like kind of thinks it's a joke and he plays into it. And it's like, no, dude, like nobody likes you. I don't, I can't think of one. He, he cheats for dynasties. Look at the chiefs. Look at the Patriots. He cues all that up. He's just a he's just a gross slimy dude. He's like a reptilian. You know how they say sometimes, you know, like these like elite people are reptilian. That's what he looks like, a, like a scaly reptilian. It's just gross, slimy. All right, enough about him. All right, I got I got I got I got to take a break. I'm all fired up now. Let's take a break. Let's take a quick break. We get back. We're gonna talk about the game. Talk about the upcoming game, and uh, maybe a prediction. Maybe maybe we'll throw out a prediction. Uh, plus, we got to go over our food menu. So, we'll take a quick break. Stay tuned. We are back. Brazil, Packers, bada bing, bada boom. I think it's going to be a great game. Like I mentioned, I think this has all the makings for a uh, an early matchup of something we'll see down the line, playoffs possibly. And um, I think Green Bay is a good team. They made a splash in the playoffs last year. Um, you know, they have Jordan Love. They have pretty much the same team coming back. They added Josh Jacobs, but you know, all of them are familiar with one another. Uh, solid group, and uh, and I think it's going to be a test for sure. I think. We have more of the unknowns. You know, I think on paper, obviously, our roster is better. Our offense is better. Who knows about the defense? I think the keys and what I'm going to be watching, I mean, I think they're bringing the house on on uh, on Hurts. I mean, that was a big thing. Hurts can't read blitzes. That's the way to beat him. You know, last year, you know, San Francisco, when they won, they're like, hey, this is the blueprint. You got to blitz the guy. He doesn't know how to handle it. So we'll see. You know, obviously we have Jurgens starting uh, in place of the retired Kelsey. You know, Kelsey, that's going to be a big loss. I know I'm kind of harsh on him and and uh, kind of critiqued his uh, off the field life, but <laughs> that just seems funny to say. But no, he, he definitely brought a lot to the to the football field, and uh, I mean it's not going to be easily replaceable. So yeah, I think they're going to be really challenging Jurgens. I think they're going to try and get to Hertz. God, I hope the Eagles are accounting for that. You know, like for the in the past, like the recent past, you think these things are so obvious. Like like the Tampa Bay playoff game last year. You knew. You knew with Bulls that they were just gonna blitz. They were gonna bring the house. Zero blitzes. And there was like there was like no no quick routes, no hot reads. There was nothing. It's like, I mean, how does how does everybody else know but the people who are getting paid in the building? haven't prepared for this. You know what I mean? Like it, it's just, it baffles me. I'm just, I'm hoping that we get there. I'm hoping Fangio, Kellen Moore. Like, I just hope these guys are studs. I really do. And I think that's going to be the key. Can, can Hertz read the, I mean, it's going to be an early test. Like, has he figured it out? Kellen Moore said they worked extensively in the off season on Hertz being able to read blitzes and getting the ball out and what to do situational. Is he able to do it? This is going to be the, the that test. It's going to be the first test because we know they're doing it. Everyone knows they're doing it. You know, it's it's on Hurts. And, and Hurts this year, there's been a lot made of, you know, his comments where Kelsey in the past, you know, he called the protections at the line. That was his role. You know, Hurts, they told him not to worry about it, and uh, Kelsey would do it. So now Hurts is calling the protections. He made some comments of, you know, his development being halted. And, uh and him being eager to get that responsibility. So, I mean, this could be a thing where he gets up there and he he completely freezes up and, you know, they're getting to him and he's not able to call. Per- I mean, this could go south very quickly. I'm optimistic. I don't think it's going to be that way. But, I mean, I can definitely imagine the narrative of, of sitting there watching this game and being in utter disbelief at how, how bad it is. And it's going to be the narrative of it, it carried over. And it's going to be on Sirianni. We're going to look and we're going to say, you know, 
it went sour last year, and they're going to say it. it carried over. And what's what's the denominator? Who's still here? And it's going to be Sirianni on that hot seat. This game needs to go well. As I'm saying all of this out loud, this game needs to go well, and we, and we need to be one and zero, and and it needs to be a smooth victory. And I don't mean smooth victory like a blowout. I mean you know it could be a close game, but we need to win and look good doing it. You know, maybe Green Bay looks good as well. We both look good. It's a close game, but we need to win, and and we need to look good doing it. Because if we don't, there's going to be drama. Drama. So we'll see. I'm excited to see the defensive line. Defensive. (laughs) The defensive line. Uh, Man, I was listening to uh, Vic Fangio's press conference from today, and I will say he was asked about um, Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis conditioning. You know, that's always been a question with them. Can they play more snaps? Are they in shape? Jordan Davis, we know, has been out of shape, has maybe taken plays off. You know, he, he's he's uh, he's definitely had that criticism. Uh, you know, I don't think Jalen Carter, not so much. He was a rookie last year. Uh, but it's still a question mark. When asked about it here, maybe we should, should we play the clip here? Let's let's play the clip. We spent a lot of the summer talking about the conditioning of Carter and Davis. Uh, how do you see their conditioning heading into week one? We'll see. You know, um, they haven't been pushed like they potentially can be pushed in this game as far as the amount of plays they may have to play. So that's TBD. So yeah, his, his response, his response is not that assuring. You know, it's very much, uh, we'll see. Yeah, we don't know. We yeah, you know, we don't know yet. So that was kind of concerning to me. And you know, I don't know if I really like that response. You, you could you could get the same point across with using different language and and maybe kind of backing your guys a little more. You know, something along the lines of, you know, they looked really good. I believe in them. You know, obviously they haven't gotten the the game reps, so so we'll have to see. But you know, I know these guys, and I and I know they're capable of it. You know, something like that, right? Because I hear that and I think, I think, wow, you know, he's not too confident in this. You know, he's kind of, it almost seems like he's like, I don't know, foreshadowing something in a sense. So, I don't know. I, I, I yeah, I would have, I would have liked a little bit of a different answer, but I think that's Fangio's whole thing, right? He's, he's kind of, uh, wouldn't say abrasive, but, you know, he's kind of truthful, honest, kind of to the point. Prediction time. Should, should, should we should we get to it? Should we get, should we get a first official prediction of the of the uh, of the season here? So the Packers, yeah, I think it's gonna be. I think it will be a tight game. I think both teams are coming in at a disadvantage. Long flights. They're gonna have to stay hydrated. They're gonna have to stay loose. They're gonna have to fight jet lag. I don't think we're gonna have much of a home field advantage, even though we are the home team and you know we're, we're doing the whole jersey thing. I think we'll travel a little better than those Wisconsinites. But I think it'll be a close game. I I I th- I, th- I I I think all those things I mentioned that could go wrong. I think there will be a little bit of a speed bump, but I don't think it'll be enough to to really sink us. Um, you know, I I think Hurst is going to make some plays. I think Jahan Dotson. I had this sort of like epiphany yesterday of him having a big game. You know, he gets in that wide receiver three. I think Saquon maybe will rush for 80 yards, 80 yards and a touchdown. I think it'll be a close game, but I, I think the Eagles will look like the better team and kind of have a handle on everything. Um, I think there'll never be a point where they let the game out, you know, get out of their control. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say 24 to 20. But the Eagles are are in command the whole time. Eagles twenty four, Packers twenty. I think we leave Brazil feeling really good about the team, and I think kind of it'll help put to rest, you know, some of the some of the issues, maybe some of the uh, unknowns from last season. Twenty four twenty, twenty four twenty, birds, man, I can't wait. Got this new TV. I got a new TV. I've been I've been meaning to upgrade the TV for a while. Now I'm just gonna I'm gonna talk about the TV a little bit because. I got a 55 inch and I thought that was good. I don't want anything bigger than like a 65 inch, but I was like, I don't, I don't know. 65 inch seems like too big. It, it just seemed like too like gaudy. Like, I, like, I don't want, like, I don't need like 
a huge TV. I don't know. It just seems like I don't want to like be like moving around and just like constant be like, why is that TV so big? Like, obviously you, you want to like watch a big TV. You know what I mean? Like, like, like a, you know, you got sports on. It's like, well, man, yeah, the bigger, the better. But you know, when, when the TV's off, I really don't want to like see like, like glaring off a 65 inch mirror. You know what I mean? <laughs> if that makes sense. But I got this 55 inch TV and, uh, I, I think this is the, the problem with buying TVs. Now I'm like, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, man, should I take this back and get the 65 inch TV? But then I'm like, you know, when does it stop? You get the 65, then you're like, you know, should I go back and get this uh, 75 inch TV? So I think I, I think I got to be happy with it. It's definitely like a, it's it's a nice TV. Got the mini LEDs. Got a, got a sale, Best Buy sale, Labor Day sale. So, I mean, I'm happy with it. I just I, I don't know if I should. If I should, if I should, if I should get that 65 inch, got two weeks to think about it. Got two weeks to think about it. It's a good TV though. I'm excited to watch some football on it. Let's, uh, let's let's take a quick break. Let's take another little bump and, uh, and then we'll talk, we'll talk about the menu. We'll talk about the menu for this week. Bruce, here's what we're doing. As I mentioned on a previous episode, what we're doing this year, we're going to make, I don't know if it's going to be game time food. I, I think maybe like at some point during the week, like I said, maybe Saturdays I turn into like a pep rally day where I make, you know, some food because, because games are on at 10 AM here sometimes. And if I'm trying to make, you know, like a jambalaya or a, you know, whatever the case is, you, know, you don't want to eat that at 10 plus I don't have time to make that on a game day if we're, if we're starting at 10. So might do it Saturday, might do it Friday. At some point leading up, we're going to, we're going to make some, some food, some cuisine that the opposing team is known for. So, you know, if we were playing Philly, we'd, we'd make cheese steaks. You guys get it. So, you know, maybe get a local beer too, if we can. So this week, so we are in Brazil. I'm going to go with cheese curds, making some beer battered cheese curds, I think I'll be able to find some some appropriate cheese curds, you know, the, the Wisconsin style, the ones that the, I want the ones that squeak, you know, the ones that uh, squeak when you bite them. I don't know if I'll be able to find that, but I think I can probably get something, you know, in the middle, meat in the middle. Otherwise, I mean, we could just get some cheese and chop it up. It won't be as authentic. Beer batter cheese curds. I know I gave myself some extra credit to try and figure out how to do like a Bra- Brazilian infused. I don't know if I'll be able to. I've been thinking about it, but I just uh, I, I don't know how I'll I'll blend them. Um, again, yeah, I'll, I'll keep thinking. But yeah, beer battered cheese curds is what we're rocking with. We're gonna film it. We're gonna film uh, do a video too. So so be on the lookout for that. And uh, and I'm excited. I'm excited. Man, some cheese curds. Oh, oy vey. Gonna. I think we'll go with PBR. I mean, I don't think it's. You know, you don't get Moon Man or Spotted Cow. That's a new Glarus uh, Brewing Company brews, and they they they're strict to Wisconsin. I mean, if you go up there, they don't sell out of Wisconsin. You know, in Chicago, you could drive up, or you knew someone who was from Wisconsin, they'd bring it down and they'd share it. Um, so you'd be able to get it. But I mean, from Los Angeles, that's just a, a tall order. So maybe we'll just get some PBR. You know, we got to batter our. We need beer for our batter. So. We'll get some PBR, big Wisconsin establishment. We'll do some cheese curds and, and I, I don't know, maybe some, maybe some fried plantains. I, I don't know. I don't know how to get, what's Brazil known for? You got plantains, rice, steak, you know, b- beans, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Sue me. We'll have to look it up. Um, but I'm excited for cheese curds. And uh, what do we got after that? We got the Falcons. That's a Monday night game. Might do, man. I think I want to. I think I want to like throw down with some like lemon pepper wings. And you know maybe like a peach crumble. I don't know if we get some peaches. Get some. Get some crumble. 
Get some tea, some sweet, some sweet. Maybe got a Chick Fil A, get some sweet tea. No, I don't know. Maybe make it. Who knows? Who knows? But I'm excited, guys. I feel good about going into this uh, this season. I think it's going to be a fun season. I mean, I, I really do. I I, I I do say this with conviction. I, I think we are going to make a playoff push. I think it's going to go smooth. It's going to go smooth. Otherwise, if it doesn't, we can pull these clips and uh, we can do a montage of my my. Um, my just hopefulness. All right, y'all. We'll we'll see we'll see. Ya. Go birds, and uh, we'll we'll see you next. Oh yeah, let's talk about. This is gonna come out. Maybe I'll put this out. Uh, I could put this out today. I'm trying to so if the game is on Friday. Now this is just like inside baseball. You can turn it off if you're not interested in this kind of stuff. All right. So if the game is on Sundays normally. I think like this pod should come out on Thursday because there's probably going to be news and stuff leading up to the game, especially when we get, you know, into the season, there could be like injury updates. So I think on a Sunday game, this should come out Thursday. So that's, so that's two days, two days away. So Friday. So maybe we'll get this out tomorrow, Tuesday. And then I think in terms of how we handle I don't really want to record a pod on Monday. I, I don't know. Something about that just doesn't seem like fun. I can, but you know, I got work. So, so yeah, we'll do, we'll do a Sunday. I think we do like an instant reaction Sunday pod. I think like the, the Thursday pods or in this case, Tuesday, I think these will be like, I don't know. What, what are we at now? Like 31 minutes. I think we'll keep these around 31 minutes. <laughs> so specific. I could have said half an hour. We'll keep these around 31 minutes and 32 seconds. Uh, but, but yeah, I like I like the length of this. If there's more to talk about, we'll talk about it. If there's less, there's less. I think the instant reaction Sundays uh, show we'll, we'll probably keep those short. Um, you know, unless it requires more. But yeah, I think I like that schedule. So we'll yeah we'll do the instant reaction. So Friday, so Friday we'll do a pod. I mean those. Those primetime games are going to be lame, though. I mean, they're on at five here, but... Okay, yeah, I think after the game we'll do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll fire it up. And maybe, like, I hop on... I mean, we could hop on, like, towards the end. I don't know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. But, guys, it's been a pleasure. Let's, let's go on this ride together. Let's go. Go Birds. Cheers.